The rainforests of Sumatra. This female orangutan is 42 years old. Her third child, a six-year-old daughter, is still with her. Orangs look after their children for longer than any other primate except ourselves. It will take her nine years to teach her youngster everything she needs to know about this complex treetop world. She must learn how to collect ants and termites. How to identify at least 200 kinds of edible plants and how to avoid the poisonous ones. And how to judge when fruit, like this durian, has ripened to perfection. A child must be able to judge which branches can carry her weight. and which insect nests are safe to raid. Building up a complete guide to the foods of the forest is a long process. Her lessons, of course, aren't limited to food. There are other crucial skills she must learn if she is to survive in the treetops. Building a secure nest in which to spend the night, for example, takes years of practice. And this is, of course, a rainforest. So all orangs must learn how to make a shelter early in their lives. It rains almost every day, so this six-year-old has already had plenty of practice. She might live to be 50 years old, and if she too becomes a mother, she'll pass on all this expertise to her own children. At a jungle hut, this female finds a saw. Despite being totally wild, somehow she has worked out what to do with it. Like us, orangutans have an opposable thumb that allows them to grasp and handle objects with precision. Over 20 years ago, a rescue orangutan learned how to saw by watching people constructing the huts here. But this is a totally different and wild orangutan. She seems to take pride in her work. Even clearing away the sawdust.
She's so smart, she uses her feet as a vice to steady the branch. Filming a wild-born and free-living orangutan mastering this complex task is remarkable. But now, she's not the only orangutan sawing. Spy orangutan has joined her. seems to be bringing out a competitive streak. She's becoming even more enthusiastic. But for a novice, sawing is tiring work. She's lost all momentum. finally calls it a day. Spy orangutan may have machine-like stamina, but it's the astonishing and versatile mind of the real orangutan that's won the day. She certainly earned her rest. In a different part of the forest, another monitoring team are checking that the rest of the orangutans are feeding. They found a nest where someone spent the night, but they can't see who. Oh, look! Oh, Menteng. Okay, makasi. It's Menteng, one of the adolescent males. They weren't expecting to meet him on the forest floor. Menteng could do them some serious damage, but he's too close for comfort. Menteng is used to getting his food from humans. They move away from him quickly. They head through thick undergrowth in the hope he'll give up. But Menteng keeps coming. The team decide to stand their ground in the hope he'll back off. Hey, Menteng. It doesn't work. There's nothing for it but to head for the safety of the river. Unlike Leonora and Emmon, Menteng is struggling without his regular food deliveries. Too many years on his island sanctuary have allowed him to grow into a rather lazy teenager. So far, no one has seen him eat any forest fruit. And rather worryingly, he seems to think the pebble beach is made of coconuts. The team is desperate for all eight orphans to pass the first test of feeding themselves. Menteng will be given some time. He's oblivious that 600 other rescued orangutans are relying on him for their freedom. That mother and baby in there are very special to me because we were there when they first came into the center. That's Mama Abbott. And when she arrived with her little baby, she was in a shocking condition. She was very close to starvation. When she fell from the crate in front of us, it was hard to believe she was still alive. She was ravaged by hunger, wasting away with the need to provide milk for her baby. Her forest home had been ripped up and replaced with a palm oil plantation. 
where there was almost nothing to eat. It's where 90% of the orphans arriving at the centre are found. Mama Abut and her baby were rescued in the nick of time. A few more days and they would have died. But Lona and her team successfully nursed them back to health. Now, eight months on, Mama Abut's life is about to change. You must be pretty excited about this. It's always good. It's nice to get anything out of the, the project. It's so lovely. How many does this leave you with at the centre, roughly? Exactly 600. Exactly 600. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, because you just had... I think you had oh, just over 300 when I was last in. Mm -mm. Well, we had 430 then. Oh, we right. had 635, but then we got one more in just as we were going to release yesterday. We got another one in. So we just hit 600 again. Nothing to be proud of, I must admit. No, I know. Well, it just shows, doesn't it, really? Rescued and confiscated orangutans arrive at the centre faster than Lona can release them. But at least this handful have a second chance. Maba Abut has come a long way from the palm oil plantation where she was found. And to see her now fit and healthy, and her baby looking 100% as well, that's awesome. And now, over the next couple of days, we're going to be able to see her released back where she belongs. You can imagine the trauma all these orangutans have been through. But with Mama Abut, I saw it firsthand. Seeing her released will bring home how important the work of the centre really is. He is so clever that he can communicate with Rob using a new language system devised specially for orangutans. Let's start with an example from the vocabulary. Uh, this is the symbol for apple. And you'll notice that it starts with a rectangle on the outside or the exterior. And all food symbols start with a rectangle. You notice there's a diagonal line going from corner to corner and a dot right in the center. That is the only symbol that will ever look that way, and that's the only name we'll ever have for Apple. Right on cue, in swings the star of the show. I'm going to start with these. OK, we'll sit up. So you're ready to go. There you go, perfect. Good. Rob uses an intercom system to talk to AZ through the glass. So what we're going to do is name this food, which is an apple. It's ready? OK. And he tells me when he's ready to go, he'll just give a little tap on the glass and he's ready for the next question. You're doing great. I know it. OK, let's go. Now watch carefully, OK? I'm going to ask him to find the name for apple on his screen. Perfect. Good job. Good, good, Aze. That was exactly right. <clears throat> And for AZ, that's a very simple screen at this point. He can work with screens that are actually much more complex. And I'll go ahead and ask him to use one of the more complicated screens now. Same food again, AZ. OK, good. Now, I'm going to show him a very complicated screen. Good. Very good. Very good. Apart from food symbols like banana, perfect days, grapes, crackers, now watch. And carrots. There you go. AZ knows over 72 different words, okay. including objects like cups. Excellent. Well done. Well done. He even knows numbers and adjectives. But perhaps the most surprising language skill is that AZ sure can use on. verbs and commands. Okay. Aze can ask me or tell me to open something when he uses that diamond-shaped symbol with the two lines inside. You tell me what you want me to do with this closed container, OK? Open? All right, good. That was actually a very good choice, because there's a little something in there. For him, mistakes are, are actually quite rare. He's into the high 90, ready? OK, high 90% accuracy with all the symbols that he works with. Now, Aze's astonishing accuracy demonstrates not just a strong grasp of syntax and vocabulary, but a razor-sharp long-term memory. That was good. 